You know, a few weeks ago, I was with my son and I was working on the kitchen table. And he was in the living room and he was playing and he had these Legos that he was playing with. And he didn't really have a particular structure or he wasn't intentionally trying to build a, a, a specific thing. He was literally just putting Legos on top of each other, right? So he, kept, he kept putting Legos on top of each other, on top of each other. And there's one moment where he stopped and he goes, Daddy, Daddy, look at me. Uh, the, the, the Legos are almost as tall as me, right? And that's how he talks. He's a four-year-old to toddler. Tried to do my best impression. But anyway, so he was he was building. So it was almost, it was like halfway to, halfway of where he was standing, right? And so he kept building and building and building. And all of a sudden, it almost got as tall as him. But all of a sudden, the whole tower just fell and collapsed. And it didn't bother him at first, right? Because he just knew that, okay, well, I can just put him back. So that's what he did, right? And not the whole thing came off. It was like half of the tower that came, fell tumbling down. And so as he was putting it back on and he was putting that back on, he started to realize, um, like, the more, I, the more I put on this tower, the more Legos I put on this tower, it's going to fall. But he kept doing it anyway, so it fell again. So the second time, he was just so frustrated because have you ever felt like in your, in, even in life or even in your just day-to-day -day when you're just so in tune with what you're doing and with work and you're just, you're just, you're just going at it? right you're in flow um, you lose track of time and the next thing you know it it's just like whoa where did where did the time go right? and that was that was what was essentially happening to maverick and the second time when the tower fell he just felt so frustrated because his flow of putting legos on was disrupted when the tower fell when the legos fell and so he kept putting back on, but it kept falling. And then there was this one point where he just got so frustrated and he was just so, he was, he was mad at the situation and he just broke off the whole, the whole tower itself. And I told him to just try again, keep trying, right? So he kept trying and then he, he puts it on, but he was trying to do it probably, this is probably the fourth or third, fourth or third time. And he tried to put it on, but for some reason it wasn't sticking anymore because his whole world was just like, just so disrupted by it falling down. So it just, it fell, right? Or he couldn't put it on anymore. He couldn't put it on the platform where he put the Legos. So, but what was interesting is as much as he was getting, as much as he was getting uh, frustrated, he surprisingly asked for my help, right? And I was just so, uh, for me as a father, it was just such a great, great thing to hear from, you know, your son or your, your your uh, kids when they ask for help because you're so willing willing to help them and i was just like okay i'll help you i'll help you it was just so amazing to see that he realized like oh yeah i should ask i should ask daddy for help right so he asked dad for help and i helped him and i started to think about this concept right of order disorder and rebirth order disorder and rebirth and Essentially, this whole idea of adversity is essential for opportunity. Adversity is essential for opportunity. And here's what I mean. Even in our life, right? I know it's an illustration of my son putting Legos, but we can also apply that to real life, right? Because post uh, pre-COVID, generally speaking, everything was in order, right? We were going, we we're living our lives. We didn't even think about a pandemic. Then all of a sudden, this pandemic hit us and it just caused so much disorder, so much chaos in our day to day. We didn't know what to do with our lives, right? We didn't know whether to wear a mask, when to wear a mask, should we wear a mask? Can we wear a mask? Like it was just so we couldn't go outside anymore, right? We couldn't go out to the grocery stores that much without feeling this sense of fear of catching the coronavirus. So that was such a disorder to our life and going back to this concept of adversity is essential for opportunity adversity is essential for opportunity and what happens during disorder if you don't realize it or if you're if you're not aware of it and i hope i'll be that kind of person to help you at least be aware of it and i'm not saying that you should get out of adversity right away because that's not reality everybody has their own way of of 
of trying to get out of adversity. Right? It's not, it's not like, oh, you should just get out of it. You should just change your mind. You should, yeah, but it's, it's easier said than done, right? Because we could have lost a loved one, right? And I'm, I, I, I don't know how that feels, but as a chaplain, I can just sense just the heaviness and the burden and the fear that's fear in somebody's life so much, even with somebody that's about to pass. I can't imagine what they're feeling. So much of the family members because order, right? They were so used to having that person around for so many years and all of a sudden they're about to pass. Disorder. Or you stayed at a job for about 10 years or so or five years or so and you're just so used to it but all of a sudden you get laid off. Or you had to quit because of different circumstances that happened in your life disorder right or uh, practically speaking or even if you're in school right now i'm in grad school and what if there's some stories i've heard that they have to drop out of grad school because of family th family situations or they just couldn't finish for various reasons disorder right but what's amazing about adversity is that it is an opportunity to deepen yourself, deepen what's going on in your, in your soul, in your mind, in your whole body, right? Because what happens during disorder, you can start to blame yourself. And I've seen and heard people do that, especially in the faith communities. You start to think that God is mad at you, that God is trying to teach you a lesson. Have you heard that before? Right, and the worst one is, is you got an accident because God is trying to teach you something. These erroneous statements that can just continue to add to the adversity that you're going through already. And they somebody will put it on God that God is teaching you something. Right, and you start to question yourself as a well-being. You start to put yourself down. You start to question your well-being, you question your existence. Disorder. Wow. Right? And the beauty of disorder is the next stage of rebirth. Right? Because rebirth is this opportunity. And, and please, I'm not saying, I'm not discounting any adversity that you're going through right now that you should get out of it right now. No, it's, it's a process. Life is a process. Life is a journey. Everybody has their own way and their own timing of when they get out of adversity. When they get out of whatever they went through that it just crushed um, their life. But I'm here to say is, in any adversity, there is all always and also opportunity for growth opportunity to have a deeper sense of self a deeper sense of beingness right in in ancient christianity this is called the dark night of the soul when you hit rock bottom when you don't know what to do and you're it's all chaotic and you're just stuck and paralyzed you have no idea what to do next that's the dark night of the soul, but it's also an eruption, an opportunity to have a deeper spiritualization in your life, a deeper beingness in your life. And there's this quote that says, a strange fact is that although we go through very painful events in our life, it says, a strange fact is that it almost never happens that people awaken spiritually while they're in their comfort zone. So while you're in your comfort zone, you know what happens? You don't have this, this, you, you don't feel this compelling reason to grow. You have no compelling reason to continue to get deeper, deeper spiritually or deeper in the sense of, of getting better at something or... Um, being deeper in, in knowing who you are spiritually and as yourself. And so even just looking back at COVID, right? 
in our society, in our culture, a lot of things happened during COVID. A lot of disorder happened during COVID. But it was also an opportunity for us to step back just for a moment and try to block out all the chaos and be in reflection, being still and asking ourselves as individuals and as a, as a, as a society and say, what is happening here right now? What is changing? What is the opportunity that is presented at us for us to do something different and not fight so much to go back to normal, right? So we need to somehow, in those moments of adversity, we have to try to find a way to have this realization that there's a deeper movement that's going on in our spiritual lives, in our individual lives, individual lives and, and as a society and culture. And that's when the rebirth happens. That's when the rebirth is finally unveiled, when you are aware that, okay, yes, I'm gonna sit in my adversity, I'm gonna sit with my pain, I'm gonna sit with my emotions, I'm not gonna try to get past it as fast as I can, as the world tells us, society tells us, Right? No, I'm going to sit in it, but I'm also going to realize that it is also essential for opportunity. Right? Order and disorder are not separate things. They are actually together in our life, if you haven't noticed already. And I'll end with this, and it says this. So your life then moves between order and di disorder. You have both, and they're both necessary. And there's no guarantee that you will actually erupt, right? I'm not guaranteeing you that there's something uh, amazing that will happen after your disorder. There's no guarantee, but there's also a possibility that there is opportunity in the midst of your adversity. So I hope that helps somehow. Um, this is something I'm just reflecting. Again, these are videos that are for myself and helping me practice um, speaking, but ultimately because uh, there's things that I just can't help. Uh, help just keep in within myself that somehow it will help somebody that one person that's watching and and that's all I want to do is try to help people through my voice right that adversity is essential for opportunity adversity is essential for opportunity